Hey guys, it's Joe from Pocketnow.com and Google just released a new version of Google Maps, version 4.4. What's in it? What's been updated? Let's go look! Okay, Google Maps is the only app that I know of that has several icons to get into various different things that it does. If you take a look, we've got Maps, which is just that. That's your Maps. It's got Latitude. That's your social location sharing part of Google Maps. It's got Navigation, which you're all familiar with by now. And it's got this new icon called Places. It's also got Shortcuts, and I'll show you a little bit about those in just a minute. Let's jump into Maps and see what's new. First and foremost, let's go into the About screen. And you'll notice here, this is version 4.4, but you'll also notice that this is all on white. It's black text on a white background. This is really a change for Google because they've been doing a lot of their stuff with white text on a, back, a black background. The reason for that, they said, is to save battery life. And the screens on these devices chew up more battery than anything else, even Wi-Fi and uh, the cell phone radios. Screens take up a lot of power, so they're trying to do what they can to conserve battery life. Then again, with the new color scheme, it looks like they're going over to what people like, which is the light themes. So let's take a look. I've turned on some labs here, so let me turn those off. You can see I've got a whole bunch of stuff already turned on in my layers. Let me show you how to do this. So we go back into more, and you can see labs. These labs are the same things that we're familiar with. You've got a scale bar that you can add onto your screen just so you can get a rough idea of what the scale of that map is, you know, how close zoomed in you are. So it's got this layers button, which is quick access to be able to turn on and off various layers. It's got traffic with labels. This one's still a little bit buggy, but what it does is it lets you see the label of the street through the traffic indicator. So here you can see this is a green street, meaning traffic's flowing really well, but you can still see that this is the San Diego Freeway. So that's something that I really like. They've got to work a little bit on the opacity to make sure that the traffic data is still visible while making the street name visible too. The My Location button, just in case you're scrolling all around the map to see what's around you, if you want to go back to where you are really quickly, tap that and it'll take you there. I'll go ahead and turn that on because I kind of like that feature. Bubble Buttons is a little bit um, weirdly named in my opinion. What this does is it changes the way that you click on things and the, the bubble that pops up so it's a little bit more interactive. It adds buttons that you can call and get directions directly to a search result right there in that, uh, that pop-up bubble. Very nice, very convenient. I like it better than uh, without the lab turned on. Last but not least is measure. If you want to find out how far it is between two points, you can turn on measure. I've never had a need for that. If I ever do, I'll come in and turn it on manually. But let's go back. You can see here on the map, this is where I am, and I'm looking at it in, well, let's see what my layers mode is, traffic and terrain mode. So I kind of like satellite, so let's switch over to that. And now you can see satellite, all stuff that you're very familiar with. You can see my icon up here. This is being fed from Latitude, which brings me to Latitude. These are people that I'm friends with that are not necessarily around me. Daniel Webster and George Anderson, for example, nowhere near me. But I've got them on there, and if they're ever around, I'll be able to see where they are. It's really nice to see where your friends are, where they're going, um, so if somebody's nearby, you can grab a quick lunch. You can get a hold of them. Uh, for example, if we want to come in here, you can tap and hold on someone, my wife, for example, and it brings up all of their contact information. So I can call, go right to their contact, text, Gmail, or even Google Talk with my wife right there. Very convenient. And then, of course, when they're on the map, you'll be able to see them near you. I'll see if I've got any of my friends nearby. And I do, I've got a couple people over here just off the freeway. So I could be able to call them up and say, hey, let's go out for breakfast. Kind of neat, kind of cool. You can see right in, in, in here, let me scroll in a little bit. This is what I was talking about, that, uh, that transparency on the traffic data. I can see that this is Veterans Memorial Highway, but 
because the traffic data is kind of opaque, you can see through it. They still have to work on it a little bit. It's a lab. Hey, not a big deal. But let's go back over here. Navigation. You're familiar with navigation, of course. Again, you've got the black text on a white background, so that's different. You've got a quick icon over here to take you back to maps. You've got a settings icon. It looks like gears, and this lets you customize your route. I don't like tolls, so we're going to avoid them. Speak your destination, type it, get it from your contacts, start items. This is a biggie. If you have some place that you like to go, just tap on start items, and if you've started before, it's in there. This is favorites taken across every single thing on the phone, and it's really, really convenient. Down at the bottom of the screen, you've got recent destinations, places that you have searched for recently. Very, uh, very easy. Come back over here. I already showed you latitude. That's just a quick shortcut into it. And I want to save this places just for a minute to show you something that you probably don't know about. And that's these shortcuts. If I want to go to, say, the White House, I can make a shortcut to take me to the White House. And this icon, I can customize it. If you look down at the bottom, it's got a little bus on the arrow. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if we uh, get up real close here and see it. So there's a little bus down there. That means that not only have I put in the address for this location, but I've also told it that I want to go there using mass transit. Now, that's not going to help because there's no mass transit data in my location, as you can see here. Transit routing's not available. But it brings me right up here and says, do you want to change this to navigate by car, by bicycle, or by walking? Well, let's go ahead and change it to car. Choose go. Now, if I'm in a more metropolitan area, uh, specifically... Uh, the East Coast or West Coast where that mass transit data is readily available, I can still use that shortcut and it will show me how to get to that location using mass transit. So it's not a bad thing to have on there. That's just your preferred method to get there. You can see here again going to the white background. We can now show this location on the map, navigate, and the directions to get there are down at the bottom. You can see here that these are toll roads that I have to take. So let's go ahead and navigate there. It's going to fire up the navigation part of Google Maps. Again, this is all inside the Maps app, and it's going to get driving directions. This time it takes a little while because I'm navigating to the White House, and I am a good 2,000 miles away. Come over here and look at the route info and see exactly where I need to go. If I don't like this route and I want to go another way, just tap on the routing icon, and I can choose from a couple of other routes that... May uh, This one, for example, is uh, about 25 miles longer, but it takes the same amount of time, so I can tap on that and go I-80 to I-70, or if I want to take a little bit longer time on I-64, I can do that as well. Something I didn't know is, hey, look at that, where I am in Washington, D.C., we're uh, about the same uh, latitude there. Kind of fun. So, now what everybody's been waiting for, let me just get all the way back is this new places. This is something that's been missing from Google Maps for a long time. And it's something that Layer and other augmented reality and other mapping softwares have been a little bit more up to date on. If you tap on places, it will show you a categorical list of things near you. So if I want to find the nearest gas station, I tap on that, it does a quick search for gas stations, and it shows me right here distances, whether I've started or not, maybe even a picture, and customer reviews of that location. So that's really, really nice. It's very helpful. If I want to go down here to 7-Eleven, I believe this is even my favorite 7-Eleven where I get most of my caffeine, so uh, good plug there. Yeah, that's Colleen. I see her almost every day. I can now see that on a map. I can get directions to it. I can call them right from here and I don't remember what that last one is. Oh, that's Street View. I can see what this looks like as I'm driving down the street so I know what to look for. So, very nice, very intuitive. This is a huge update for Google Maps. Something I really, really like about Google and their Maps product is, is the updates that come out to it. But this is the first time that it's been more than just a bug release or a very minor feature iteration. Um, this is every bit as big as when they added navigation to uh, to their map software. I really like it. One thing I'd like them to do, so if anybody at Google is listening, 
I want to be able to customize these. Yes, I can add a custom search. So if I want to look for, say, parking lot, parking lot, that's spelled with an O these days, and uh, not a, you guys try typing on camera. It's not as easy as you might think. So if I want to look for parking lot, I can add that. And now down at the bottom, I've got parking lots. And it will do a search for parking lot. It's just a really quick shortcut to things that you search for frequently. What I don't like is I can't customize these icons and I can't get rid of it. I don't drink, so I really don't have any use for bars. But I would really love to be able to have something else on here that would replace it. So if I could be able to tap and hold and remove and replace it with something else, I think that would be a great thing. So Google, there's my tip. Now, the last thing is I promised I'd show you how to add one of these shortcuts. Tap and hold and go down here to shortcuts and you can choose directions and navigation and put in either an address or a person's name and get directions to it. Here's the method of travel by car, by mass transit, etc and the fact that you want turn-by-turn -turn navigations by default you can give it a name and then you've got all these icons to choose from go ahead and save that and now you've got a new icon right there which I've done for home I've got a shortcut on my home screen that I can tap that will take me back to my house so if I've ended up somewhere where I am or I don't know the fastest way to get back home one touch navigate and it shows me the quickest way to get home Good work, Google. Keep polishing. Uh, I know that you guys have a lot more in store for us, and I think that's great. You guys out there, if you like Google Maps and the frequency of their map updates, give this video a thumbs up. If you'd like to stay in touch with everything that's going on in the mobile world, the updates to Google Apps, go ahead and subscribe to our video channel. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comments below. And of course, if you haven't been out to PocketNow.com, the website recently, go ahead and head on over there. We've got lots of stuff that's not in videos for you to see. So showing off some of the new features of Google Maps 4.4 for Android, I'm Joe for PocketNow.com.